Hey guys, as requested, I'm going to respond to Greg Duchette's response to Tech Lead, whose video I already also responded to. I don't want to make any more videos about Greg Duchette. His videos are some of the stupidest, most ignorant on the internet, but this is an important topic. I'm going to show you what he says, talk about it, and prove that this guy is a cookbook. Coach Greg and I got a bone to pick with this guy. His name is Tech Lee. He's got 1.4 million followers and he has the audacity to post this video. Muscles shorten your life. How to live longer. And so I got sent this video by a number of people saying, Coach Greg, got to make a video on this. Muscles can kill you. You're going to shorten your lifespan that way. A lot of the bodybuilders actually don't live past 48. That's the average age that they live to. And so he begins the video by discouraging everyone from going out there and lifting weights, saying, yeah, you're celebrating making the gains, but those gains, they're going to kill you. After all, it's going to cause cardiovascular disease. And that the average... What kind of gains do you actually make? You simply stress your body and adapt it to a stressful and aging life. Every time you work out, you age your body and shorten your lifespan, obviously biochemically. That's nothing that you can even argue about. So you're not actually making any life gains, any beneficial gains. You are simply growing your muscles to adapt to a stressful lifestyle, which you were brainwashed to follow. The average age of death for a bodybuilder is close to 48 years of age. And so you're thinking, wow, 48. But how many old people body? It's kind of like that study that said the average age of death for a marathon runner somewhere in the early 50s. But how many people 80, 90 years old are actually running marathons? And so if you only study the people who are actively bodybuilding. Nobody who's 80 or 90 runs marathons because the ones who used to do it are dead. And the ones who live to 90 never did it. That's why they live so long. What do you not understand? Not that living to 90 is an achievement. We have tons of records from 200, 300 years ago of humans living past the age of 150. Today, maybe living to 90 is an achievement, but it's a joke compared to how long humans are supposed to live naturally. And say, what age did they die? Is it actually a fair comparison? And if you think of it, do you think these people are dying because they were working out building muscles? Or do you think it might maybe have something to do with the abuse of performance enhancing drugs? Like, really? For sure, nobody's denying the drugs play a part. Greg himself is on a lot of drugs, which is why he's going to die prematurely. Marathon runners are not on a lot of drugs, yet they still die prematurely and that's because of how stressful marathon running and bodybuilding is. Think about it. You know, the problem is that we have this epidemic of influencers and social media online just promoting the gym, supplements, protein powders, and you have to understand that this is a big business. And so his beef is that there's a bunch of social media influencers, you know, fit guys like Sean Naljewick, perhaps Coach Greg, Jeff Cavalier, and that we promote the use of protein powders, going to the gym and lifting weights and doing 150 minutes of cardiovascular activity every single week. And so he says because of that, people are going to die in early death and that we don't want you to know the truth that we're actually lying to you in secret for profit we want to make more money than last time and so we no i don't think that that's what he was saying he understands that people who do bodybuilding are ignorant nobody would actually on purpose shorten their life just to get some money which doesn't even exist that makes no sense of course greg duchette himself is incredibly brainwashed which is why he also promotes it that goes for pretty much everybody else who promotes bodybuilding or any kinds of sports on the internet. We lie to you and tell you to go to the gym to work out, to eat a healthy diet, because it makes us money. And then if we actually told you the truth, we'd say, hey. You don't promote eating a healthy diet. You promote taking supplements, drugs, <laughs> all of that garbage behind you. What are you talking about? Stay away from the gym. Don't work out. All that stuff, it's going to shorten your life. A lot of people just didn't believe it. They were making fun of me, saying I'm some wimp, some soy boy programmer nerd. And, and so, yeah, they stated these things about you because, well, let's look at Exhibit A. You're sitting there. You have a Google desk job. You promote people to be sedentary, to not work out. And you think that if you have muscle, that it's somehow going to shorten your life. But you never even for one second mentioned that these people are dying, probably abusing steroids. Muscles equals health. No, muscles maybe make you stronger, but doesn't mean you're going to live longer by any means. I I don't think anyone thinks that muscle equals health. However, having some muscles, of course, is associated with longevity. If you look at studies on longevity, those who are the weakest... Association studies are completely irrelevant, seeing as they are anti-scientific. Those kind of studies will say that vegan diets are healthy. You could easily find an association between wearing an umbrella and a reduced risk in brain tumors, as I explained in a different video. I will link you a meta-analysis, which will prove that if you work out for more than 40 minutes a week, that you will reduce your lifespan. 
If you want to take association studies seriously, then you should take a meta-analysis more seriously than this one study. And you know, all people have the same size of heart. It's like your heart is now trying to support an elephant. I mean, I've only a minute and a half in the video and look at the nonsense guy saying, oh, all people have the same size heart. Really? Well, when I used to teach physical education as a school teacher, I used to teach kids that most people have a heart about the size of their fist. And so if you look at a 100-pound female in comparison to a 300-pound male, the 300-pound male probably going to have a bigger heart than a 100-pound female. And so if you have more muscle than someone, then it's going to put too much strain on your heart. Do you really think that if you go to the gym and perhaps train your entire body twice a week and that you train natural, that you're going to put on so much muscle that it's going to put so much strain that your heart isn't going to be able to handle it? That you're going to perhaps die at the age of 50. Are you kidding me? And a heart has a limited number. Wow, I've never seen him so emotional. He's really triggered, which means that Tech Lead is right. Otherwise, he wouldn't be acting like this. Of course, any kind of cardio, which is anything you do in the gym, anything that increases your heart rate, will stretch out your heart. This has been proven biochemically, scientifically. No associations. It's because of your cardio output, which increases every time you exercise. Beats. Which is going to last longer, a car sitting in a garage or a car that's just revving at 5,000 RPMs in neutral? And so is there no in between? For example, my McLaren. If I don't ever take it for a drive, it could die out the battery. It's not good. You actually want to take it for a drive. And so just like a car, you're supposed to go and work out your body. And yeah, you shouldn't. Yes, because we are just like a car. Exactly. <laughs> Overtrain. You shouldn't do it too much but you also shouldn't do nothing. Does he not understand that there's a happy medium? Somewhere in the middle, it's all about balance. No, I am 2X first aid certified. And so we have to listen to this guy. I mean, he's got two first aid certifications. I mean, he studied first aid. In comparison, I only have a master's in kinesiology. And so what would I know? This guy, he studied first aid. All of the gyms happen to have these AED devices to resuscitate people doing heart failure stroke. A abnormally high percentage of heart failure happens at the gym. And for being a smart guy and calling people out and saying, oh, you guys don't know how to think clearly. How does this guy not know how to think? He's saying, why would they have a defibrillator in a gym? All these fit people working out. Does every person that goes to the gym look fit to you? There are people every single year go to a gym in January. Half the gym is filled with people lifting for the very first time. New Year's resolution to get in shape. And remember, accidents can happen anywhere. And so regardless if you're in a gym or perhaps you're in a... This is uh, absolute denial because Greg could simply say, yes, people die at the gym, people get heart attacks, but instead he's trying to make up a reason. Even if these people go to the gym for the first time, why would they then get a heart attack? That's not an explanation that still proves that going to the gym and stressing your heart is bad for you. Obviously, biochemically, everybody understands this, except for people who go to the gym and want to live in denial. So instead of simply saying, yes, you are right, and just skipping to the next point, he's now trying to make up a reason as to why it happens. Maybe he's gonna say that we are like a car again. Plane or on a boat, you're gonna have a defibrillator. It just makes sense. People are looking out for safety. And we can actually see here some of the data. Bodybuilders die around age 48. And so no, the average bodybuilder is not going to die at the age of 48. And even if it was the case, let's assume that it was actually right. If you ever did a bodybuilding show. You That's just the statistics. Again, uh, what's your argument? You're just saying no. That's not an argument. You die at 48. Do you think it's for natural bodybuilders? This is for professional bodybuilders who are competing. And so if you actually look at some of the most famous bodybuilders in the It doesn't say that anywhere. Why do you lie? Would you say the average bodybuilder died at 48? Who are some of the most famous bodybuilders that you can think of? Perhaps Arnold Schwarzenegger? Do you really think Arnold was natural? The heart is simple. Arnold Schwarzenegger had three heart surgeries already. You completely proved Tech Lead's point. He would already be naturally dead if it wasn't for the surgeons. He's one of the unhealthiest people on earth. Simply not strong enough in my belief to support these big muscles. He's saying the heart just simply isn't big enough to support these big muscles. Unlike Michael Hearn who says, hey, hearts are very strong. They can support people who are 600 pounds of fat. You don't need to do cardio. You just need to lift weights. And so no, I'm not going to go. Lifting weights is cardio by every definition of the word. Jesus, this guy is stupid. That far. I don't think that the heart is made to support people who are five or 600 pounds, but certainly can support somebody who goes to the gym three times a week and has 20 pounds more muscle than they would have without training. What about medium muscles? Are you going to live longer? Yeah, maybe a little bit longer for medium muscles. And so he says, if you extrapolate this data, then perhaps medium sized muscles can help you to live longer. And so why doesn't he start the video with that? Hey everyone, I want to promote the fact that you should train natural, that medium sized muscles, the kind you can build while training natural. That's not at all what he's saying. If you simply live naturally, then you already have a natural amount of muscle. He's not saying that you should actually work out at all. You don't need to, obviously. Every time you exercise or stress your body in any way at all, you decrease your lifespan. Human beings, along with other animals, have a natural amount of muscle. The results are startling. The highest death rate is actually among men who exercise the longest and hardest. 
Who would have believed that? And so he cherry picked studies, making it look like those who exercise over 140 minutes a week are those who die the soonest, the earliest. Really? When we all know that VO2 max is the number one predictor of longevity and that those with the highest... Wait, wait. What are you talking about? VO2 max is just... A way to see who is more adapted to stress. The more adapted you are, the more stressed your body is, which means that you're going to live a shorter life. Obviously. He's also not cherry picking studies, he's simply trying to present proof. Presenting proof doesn't automatically mean that you cherry pick. Those with the highest VO2 max, those that really train harder than last time. I went to Greg Duchette's video to check the description to see if he has linked anything that he presented in this video, but there's nothing which means that this could simply be an article. It really means nothing at all. I can't take it seriously. Trying to look good is not going to shave off two, five, 10 or 20 years off your life if you're doing it natural in a healthy way. If you're going to the gym doing cardio and eating healthy. But being sedentary, eating like shit, being a couch potato, that could shave off years of your life. Correlation between- There is zero proof for that. If you would eat badly, then yes. But as far as our sedentary lifestyle goes, all that we need to do is look at the blue zones, such as the Okinawans. They live a completely sedentary lifestyle and live to 100 plus heart failure and muscles continues to be alarming and even more so when you consider the young age at which too many pro bodybuilders are dying from heart failure. Correlation does not equal causation. How many times- <laughs> It's a joke. This video is a joke. I can't take this guy seriously. Association is the same as correlation. You only presented association studies it's the same thing. Association also doesn't mean anything. Oh my God, man. Stupidest guy on the internet. I can't. Have we heard this by now? In practically <sighs> every single study, people say this caused that. No, it didn't. There are co-founding factors, namely steroids. Muscles don't attract women, just like how fast cars don't attract women. Muscles attract men. Muscles do not attract women. Really? No woman has ever looked at a guy with a chiseled physique, a little bit of- Yes, no woman ever. Hello, how ignorant are you? Go and ask women. Actually, go and ask women what women like. There's tons of interviews online, street interviews, of women being interviewed as to what they like in a man, and they are presented these bodies. None of them have ever, ever chosen a guy who has a lot of unnatural muscles because it's an unnatural body. Men and women only want what is natural. Jesus, man. The muscle and thought, yeah, that guy looks attractive. Fast cars don't attract women. Are you kidding me? What's- Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. You just used the word attract. What is attractive to a woman? Hmm, maybe somebody attractive? A man-made piece of metal and wheels is not attractive. It's unnatural. It's a man-made object. Of course, it cannot attract a woman. Oh my God, man. Oh my God. Next, taller guys are not more attractive than shorter guys? If you're yeah, taller guys are more attractive than shorter guys. That's why women don't find you attractive. At last, something right. You're five foot six manlet like Coach Greg. You really think you can look as good as somebody who's six foot two? No, because it's natural. If you're good looking and you're tall, you're attractive to women. That's the whole point. They are attracted to what's natural. Oh my God. And also good looking? Of course not. This guy lives in a bizarro fantasy world where he thinks that nothing actually matters. Turns out most women surprisingly aren't attracted to huge muscles. They like just normal people. And so apparently women just like normal people. But even back in the 1930s, girls actually liked a little bit of muscle. And so again, he cherry picks a video. Proof? Where's the proof? Well, picking out a few girls, yet I also did a video comparing what physiques women liked. And for the most part, it was somewhere between 10 and 15% body fat. And yeah, the guy in fact lifted weights. They did not prefer the guy that had no muscle whatsoever. And so the average woman does in fact prefer a guy. Okay, and what's your point? If you eat raw meat, that's how you're gonna look like. They did not prefer the guy who had more muscle, which means that they are generally not into muscles. Seeing as then, everybody who has more muscle would automatically be more attractive to these women because the more of something attractive you have, the better it would be. But it's not like that, which already proves that muscles are not attractive to women. I with a little bit of muscle. You don't need to be jacked, a professional bodybuilder. You don't need to be shredded. 
but you do, in fact, need to be healthy if you want to be seen as highly attractive to most women. Then the other thing to know is... Yeah, live naturally, eat raw meat, and that's how you're going to look like. A lot of the bodybuilders out there are loading up on protein. They eat a lot of eggs. It's not necessarily healthy. It turns out to have an association with liver failure. No. Eating the recommended amount of protein to maximize... Yeah, I also didn't agree with him about that. Building muscle, for example, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is not associated with liver disease. Okay, women who hit the gym who are weightlifting. But now it really gets worse. This is where I said, yeah, I got to do a video. When this guy starts picking on women who go to the gym, women who work out. That resistance training triggers an abnormal hormonal testosterone response that builds up in their bloodstreams. Really? Are you guys hearing this? Are you listening to what the nonsense this guy is feeling? And this can cause a loss of feminine qualities, deeper voice, or even infertility and that stress. He's literally presenting proof that that's what happens and Greg just says, look at what this guy is saying with no arguments. <laughs> and induce issues with pregnancy, like abortion. And so, yeah, all the girls out there going to the gym, lifting natural, are probably going to cause abortion. Probably going to turn you into a man. Yeah, if a woman is pregnant, she can very, very easily get a miscarriage, even if she lifts one box. This is common sense. If you lived in a normal society, then your grandma or your mother would have taught you if you're ever pregnant, never lift anything. That's why women in nature don't do the physical work. And testosterone itself, you know, and the overloading of that has been linked to cancer as well. And so as it turns out, a lot of women bodybuilders end up infertile. And does he not think that these women bodybuilders who end up infertile, tragically, does he not think that maybe some of them were taking steroids? Like, really? People are just Yeah, but he proved to you that the testosterone increases whether you take drugs or not afraid to tell women this truth because they're going to get canceled. And so he thinks that us fitness influencers, that we don't dare say this for fear of getting canceled. Oh, oh my goodness. If we spoke the truth to women that if they go and work out, they're going to become infertile. Who could say that? The reason we don't say it is because it's bullshit. In my opinion, bodybuilding. Calling something BS with no arguments proves that tech lead is right for women is essentially sterilization. And so in his opinion, I mean, this is where he should get canceled. Bodybuilding for women is sterilization. He's he actually showed proof, though. We know that Brian Johnson is lifting weights every single day and is on... Yeah, that's why Brian Johnson looks like he's 60 years old. What's your point? <laughs> he's proof that working out decreases your lifespan and makes you look old. On HRT, the guy is literally taking testosterone. And so if it was so bad to have muscles, why would Brian Johnson be lifting weights? Because he's stupid. I already made five videos on him. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to this. Who are you going to believe? And so I asked you the same question. At the end of the day, who are you going to believe? This was incredibly painful to watch, mostly because he gave no proof for his beliefs and simply said that this is BS. He got very emotional, which already proves that what Take Lead said is right. Otherwise, you wouldn't get so triggered. You would simply say, no, you are wrong. Here's the proof, or at least here is my argument. But no, instead, it got to him so deeply that he acted like a girl. He's always very anti-masculine. I'm used to it, but in this video, he was very feminine. It was just painful. Thanks for watching.